All right, guys, today we're going to be starting our multiplying decimal unit. And so what I'd like for you to do is go ahead and get your notebooks out. Uh, title this multiplying decimals. Add the days, today's date on the top corner, and we will be multiplying a decimal by a whole number. So we're going to pause right here and let you get all of that taken care of. Okay, the other thing we are going to need is you are going to need three of these little hundreds grids, so just one strip of three. All right, so just three right there. Uh, they should be already in strips. If not, cut them out and add have those on your desk when you take these notes. Okay. All right. Okay, so you already have multiply a decimal by a whole number. We're going to underline that because that's what we're going to start with today. Then we will move into multiplying decimals by uh, decimals. But for now, let's start off nice and easy and go ahead and highlight that and make that stand out. Um, so that's where we're going to start. Multiply a decimal by a whole number. All right, so our first problem is we are going to do um, four groups of 600. So we're going to start off, oh, let me put back the pen. We're going to start off with four times 600. And we're actually going to write the word model. So let's forget, let's write the word model real quick on there. So that way we know we're going to start off with modeling. And this is part of our standard. Not only do we have to be able to do it with the algorithm um, or some sort of way to find the answer, we have to be able to recognize what a model looks like. So we're going to go ahead and draw this model. And we're going to start off with three times uh, six hundredths. That's our first problem. Three times six hundredths. All right, now you're going to need one of those handy dandy grids so you can pull that out beside you. And we're actually going to end up putting it right here, but you want to go ahead and color that first before we kind of put that in there. Okay, so let's color it because then if you tape it or glue it, it won't matter. Um, it won't mess anything up. So let's go ahead and do that first. So our problem is three groups of 600s so or three times 600s. So you're going to need some colored pencils also. So uh, hopefully you have those with you. And we're going to take one of our hundreds grid and we are going to go ahead and shade in three groups of 600s. Okay. So I'm going to use one of my colored pencils and I'm going to do my first group of 600s. And so I'm going to go ahead and shade this in. So one hundredth, two hundredths, three hundredths, four hundredths, five, two, three, four, five, and six hundredths. Okay, so there's our one group of six hundredths. Pick another color and let's show the second group of six hundredths because our problem says three times, our problem is three times six hundredths, right? So we need three groups of six hundredths. So we've already got one group there. Let's take our second color and let's go ahead and shade in. Feel free to pause along the way while you do this. Three, four hundredths, five hundredths, and six hundredths. All right. How many groups do we have so far? If you said two, you're in great shape. So we have one purple and one green. Let's do one more color. Let's pick a uh, blue this time. All right, let's go ahead and do our third group of 600. So there's one, two hundredths, three hundredths, four hundredths, five hundredths, and six hundredths. All right, so we've got our three groups of 600s. Let's count how many did we take up out of our entire 100 grid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So our answer here is eighteen hundredths. All right. And that should make sense. I want you to think about that. What is three times six? Eighteen. So and in just instead of doing three groups of six and a whole number, we're doing three groups of six hundredths. So it should make sense that our answer would be eighteen hundredths. Okay, so let's go back to our notes and let's tape this cut. You may have to cut it out a little bit more and we are going to tape it right here. So and let's go ahead and put our answer. So three times six hundredths equals eighteen hundredths. And we'll pause there unless you guys get that in your notebook. All right, for our second problem that we're going to do, 
Um, we're going to do, let's see, two groups this time. And let me change back to the purple here. We're going to do two groups of, let's do, let's do 38 hundredths. And once again, once we get done coloring it, we will tape or glue our hundredths grid right there. So two times 38 hundredths. Let's go ahead and start that. This is telling us that we have two groups of 38 hundredths. Just in, like two times 38, we're just going to do it in hundredths instead of using um, whole numbers. So two groups of 38 hundredths. All right, go ahead and grab your beautiful colored pencil and let's go ahead and since we're doing groups of 38, let's shade in our first group of 38. Well, the good news is we have three tenths, so we can go ahead and shade these three of these whole columns down. We know it's going to be 30. So one group, there's 10, 20, 30, and then we need eight. All right, there's our one group of 38. And hopefully you guys can do a better job of coloring than I am. It's hard kind of coloring on my iPad here, so... But feel free to make do a lot better job at coloring than I am right there. All right, so we have our two groups of 38. Let's go ahead. Our one group, sorry. We got to get our second group. So let's go ahead and get our second group. So one, two. Here's 10, 20, 30. And we have two, so 32, 33, 34, 35, 6, 37, and 38. All right, let's get our answer. We can count up all of these squares to get that. Good news again, they're in tenths. So here we go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 76 hundredths. Just instead of saying 38 times 2, which would give us 76. And once again, we're just doing it as hundreds in this particular thing. This also works for tenths. This works for thousands. This works for all of them. All right. All right. Once you've got that colored, go ahead and cut that out and let's tape that back in our notebook and make sure you write that answer down at the bottom. All right. This last one I want you to do on your own. Um, let's go ahead and write our next problem out. Let's do... We did what? Two and three there. Let's do four. Let's do four groups of 24. Four groups of 24. So Okay. We'll go ahead and continue with our hundreds since we're using that hundreds grid here. And that's where we're going to put it. So you guys work ahead on this one, and then we're going to come back and check your answers. But you go ahead and do this one on your own. So we need four groups of 2,400s. Go for it. All right, if you're back, we are doing this next part here. So let's say our problem was four times 24. So hopefully you guys got this right. Your first group of 24, we have 20 here. And one, two, three, four. It's one group. Two groups. 20. One, two, three, four. And however you do it is fine. You need three groups of 24, just as long as you have it. There's one, two. 20. 23, 24. And finally, let's use orange here. Wow, it's getting close. One, two, three, four. With our 20 there. That's almost every square in our hundred grid. Almost one hole. All right, we have four squares left right there. So you should have gotten 96 hundredths. Did you get that right? Awesome, if you did. If not, talk to me and we'll see if we can figure it out what happened. All right, let me go back. Go ahead and cut that out, tape it in, and put 
Your answer is 96 hundredths. All right. Now, once again, you don't want to be using kind of these hundreds grids all the time, but it does help to show you why this is what it is. Okay. All right. So go down to the bottom of your page if you have room or go, you should have plenty of room, but if not, go to the next page. Um, I have to go to the next page. So let me add another one here. There we go. All right. So when we're multiplying using the algorithm, okay, so just using the Plano algorithm. Um, again, I think you guys are using box method or standard. Hopefully you're using standard, but if not, please know you can use box method. It's a little bit trickier, but you can totally do it. All right. So uh, let's do say three and five tenths times four. Three and five tenths times four. Okay. All right. Easy. What I want you to do for the time being is kind of ignore the decimal for just a little bit. All right. So the algorithm allows you to kind of just multiply like normal and ignore the decimal until the very end. So if we're doing this, we could say four times five, which would be 20. Carry my two. Four times three is 12 plus two, 14. Now, this is where we go back and check with that decimal. We have one number behind the decimal, so we need to put one number behind the decimal and just simply put our decimal right there. So our answer to this problem would be 14. Easy. Okay, let's go with another little step it up a little bit here. So another example, let's do one and 762 thousandths times three. I'm trying to use little numbers here to just kind of make sure we're learning. All right. Feel free to pause if you want to try this out ahead of me real quick. All right. So three, let's start off with our three times two. So three times two is six. Three times six, 18. Carry my one. Three times seven, 21 plus one, 22. Carry my two. Three times one is three plus two is five. All right. Again, one, two, three numbers behind my decimal. One, two, three numbers behind my decimal. So your answer is five and 286 thousandths. I would really get used to counting those numbers behind the decimal. Don't just drop the decimal down because it's not going to work that way when we multiply decimals by decimals. So please get into the habit of multiplying, I mean, counting those numbers behind the decimal to make this work, all right? Let's do one with two digits real quick. And we'll can using the standard algorithm, okay? Let's do um, two and 53 hundredths times 19, okay? All right, this is the same as the standard algorithm. It's the same with whole numbers. The only different thing that we're adding is putting that decimal in place at the end. So nine times three is 27, carry my two. Nine times five is 45 plus two is 47, carry my four. Nine times two, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. We're done with those carries and we're done with that number. We're sliding over to the 10. So what do we have to put on that second row? We have to put that zero in place, right? Okay, here we go. One times three. Now we're gonna take that one through everything on the top row. One times three, three. One times five, five. One times two, two. What do we do next? Add them. Seven plus zero, seven plus three. 10, carry my one, five, six, seven, eight, and two plus two is four. Go back, double check. We've got our decimal in play. We have one, two numbers behind the decimal, one, two numbers behind the decimal. So our answer is 48 and seven hundredths. All right, um, you guys, so can go ahead and we'll practice these. Um, but basically all we're doing is multiplying like normal, and we're counting the number of behind numbers behind the decimal. 
All right, and then we're adding the same amount of numbers in our answer. All right, so that's all you've got on these notes. Um, we'll get some practice in and see how well you did. See you later.